Hey, how you doing everybody? It's Cash Sports. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about the NFL today. And specifically, are QBs overpaid in the NFL? So, Artem, do you think QBs are overpaid in the NFL? I certainly do think so. We can see a tendency when uh, QBs get a big check and they aren't doing as good as they were. For example, Aaron Rodgers. On the third year of his contract, he won a Super Bowl. And after that, he got a big check. And after that, we never saw him in the Super Bowl after. And Russell Wilson never won a Super Bowl after. Uh, and there is a lot of others. Drew Brees, Big Ben, hell, even uh, Patty Mahomes. He's been to two Super Bowls, got big check. If you aren't Brady, Eli or Peyton and you make uh, over 10% then you haven't won a Super Bowl no QB in the last 20 years whose salary cap exceed 30% ever won a Super Bowl if you aren't Brady, Peyton uh, or Eli and you have more than 10% of salary cap you haven't won a Super Bowl either Majority of the QBs that won Super Bowl take less than 10% of the team's salary cap. This shows you how with higher salaries they go to fewer Super Bowls. Now Arden, there's so much to take away from your conversation, but I'm going to just state this for the record because I want to get my point out. Now I ain't going to be counting people's money, but are QBs overpaid? I wouldn't even say it exactly like that. But I do think the NFL does have a salary cap issue in regards to QBs and their salaries. But I'm not going to eliminate the fact that there are plays out there that do get overpaid. And I'm not going to say their names, but we know who they are. But the demand for a QB in the NFL is so high. I mean, they're so rare to come by. Every year, there's always some prospect that somebody wants. They got strongest arm, the best accuracy, the best vision, but then they're a bust. And so having a QB is so valuable because they manage the offense. They're the coach on the field. They're the floor general. They manage the huddle. They call the plays. And ultimately, they could hold the fate of the team in their hands, depending on how good they are. They can either make your team or break your team. Play clock at five. Pass is intercepted at the... And in today's league, in order for you to even win a Super Bowl, you have to have somewhat of a dominant QB in, in that position. If not, they can't at least mess it up. I mean, every Super Bowl for the past couple years has had a great quarterback that's won the Super Bowl in it. That being said, because you have to have a QB. But given the recent events with COVID and all, and the NFL taking a hit with no fans in the stadium for a short time, so financial revenue was a little bit down, but the thing that didn't go down was quarterback salaries. Quarterback salaries still went up. Now, Dak Prescott, even though I do think he earned his money, he was drafted late in the, in, in the draft, and so he was getting chump change compared to what he was getting back then. This year alone, or in the 2021 season alone, Dak Prescott got $75 million in just one year. And that was the first year of his new contract. Aaron Rodgers averaged to get $50 million a year in his new contract. And so if I was to get into the 2022 season, this is just flat out ridiculous. So in 2022, Ryan Tannehill is going to have the number one cap hit leading into the 2022 season. Then you got Patrick Mahomes at number two. Third is Kirk Cousins. Fourth is Jerry Goff. And then fifth is Aaron Rodgers. Let's be honest here. Some of those QBs don't belong in the same conversation as Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers, but yet they have the highest cap hit in the 
league as far as quarterbacks go. And also in the 2022 season, Ryan Tannehill and Jimmy Garoppolo have the highest base salary for the 2022 season. So my thing is, I'm not saying QBs are over overpaid, but I, I really generally think that the salary cap is taking a toll on other players and the QB market. Now, I have a solution for all this. I think quarterbacks, if they're an all pro quarterback of any sort, I think their contract shouldn't count towards the team's salary cap. But if he's not, obviously if the quarterback is still on his rookie contract, then that should suffice. But if your quarterback is not an all pro quarterback, why is your quarterback getting max dollars? Why is he getting 40, 50 million dollars a year if he's not even all pro? So that should be up to the team. That should be their fault. So Autumn, I agree with your points. With the fact being said, QBs have to stay under a certain percentage in order for them to have a chance to win a Super Bowl with their team. Now, most of the time when QBs win a Super Bowl, it tends to be on their rookie contract. And that's when, like when you have Patrick Mahomes who already won his Super Bowl on his rookie contract, and then you have Russell Wilson win the Super Bowl on his contract. But you still have quarterbacks who win Super Bowls and not be on their rookie contract. So it's not like it's not impossible because these players getting these contracts, they can still compete. They're not getting that money for no reason. They're still elite quarterbacks. Right. So, but I do feel like quarterback contracts really shouldn't count against the team just so now that money can go towards other players and then you don't have to take away from, the, from those players and then so everybody can get paid. Hmm. That means it.